everybody how you doing welcome to shadow at night this is thursday august 4th 2022 uh welcome to the show so listen uh, a lot of you might be going hey didn't you already do your show tonight how come it was on so early what the hell's going on well i was actually on the lieutenant steve rogers show which was six o'clock central and I just restreamed it onto this page. So a lot of people were asking me, wow, are you, are you doing a, yes, yes, yes. This is it. This is the regular show every weeknight at eight o'clock central. Uh, we do the regular show. And tonight the special guest is the Grizzly Patriot, Mark Friesen from Saskatoon. We're going to talk about Marcus Ray and plans for the future, because I believe that's what a lot of people still need to hear. Uh, Grizz was here a couple of months ago in Winnipeg and gave a talk at, uh, oh my goodness, the name of the hotel is escaping me right now, which is a shame because I love the owners of it. Oh yeah, the Park West Inn on the corner of Dale Boulevard and Roblin Boulevard. Um, and, you know, Mark makes a lot of sense when he speaks and his plan makes a lot of sense. When you think about what we need to be doing as opposed to what Marcus Ray wanted some of you to do based upon your anger which didn't make any sense at all so you're going to really enjoy the show tonight with uh, mark friesen as a matter of fact you guys i want to uh, go ahead and read you a an article that came out i think it was last night from sask today about marcus ray stepping down from his position whatever that position is with with the movement i i don't <laughs> I don't even know if it had a name. But anyway, let's say hello to some folks first all across the country, all across the world for that matter. Uh, thank you very much for uh, tuning into the stream every night, you guys. Cheryl uh, from The Peg. Cheryl from Saskatoon. Timber is watching from Swan River. Joanne is watching. Marianne from Barrie, Ontario. Joyce out there in New Bothwell. Uh, Joyce and Mike, hello, you guys. Welcome to the show. Rochelle is watching from Prince George, British Columbia. Carol is in Brantford, Ontario. Hello, Carol. Kevin from the Crestview area here in Winnipeg. Shirley, uh, by the way, thank you for saying that. Yeah, Lieutenant Rogers is a is a fantastic guy. Uh, Sally is watching from St. Francois Xavier. Harvey is watching from Grand Rapids. Shelley's out in Portage La Prairie. Carol is in Wasaga Beach, Ontario. Sandra is in Perry Sound. Kelly watching from Victoria. Barb up in Stony Mountain. Christina is in The Hammer. Carla, hmm. well, I, I know you're watching, Carla. I just don't know where you're watching from. Sandy is watching from Cherry Hill near St. Anne. Fred, London, Ontario. David from Muskoka. Ethel from Prince Edward Island. Effie from Newfoundland. Joni LeClaire watching from Lethbridge, Ontario. Uh, make that Alberta. Duh. All right, let me uh, bring this article up here, you guys, because you're going to you you might laugh i don't know depending on what side of this you're on and the whole reason we're here in the first place you guys and this is something some of us may have lost sight of is that we're all critical thinkers and we were able to see through the bs of the government and corporate canada for the last couple of years about what's really going on that's why we're here so some snake oil salesman comes along and tries to sell you a bill of goods. You're going to go, ah, oh, oh yeah, absolutely. You're right. When the plan makes absolutely no sense at all and could possibly get people hurt or even killed and tarnish the entire movement. Why would you buy into that? Anyway, here's the story. Marcus Ray has stepped down from his leadership position in the freedom movement. <clears throat> I, I didn't realize he was in that position, but anyway, uh, they say here, a man leading a group that planned a peaceful protest at the RCMP training depot in Regina and every police station across Canada, that's news to me, on September 11th, has stepped down from his leadership role. I've decided to step aside, Marcus Ray told SaskToday.ca in a phone interview. Ray said other freedom activists and groups have chosen to crucify him on social media and it's hurting the movement. All right, I take issue with that. What they're doing is going against the team that's been working so hard, he said. <laughs> They've chosen to single me out, and they're lying. They're lying. There's nothing I can do. I can't do anything about the lies. I, I don't know where the lies are. It, how about exposing? No lying. The groups have attacked Ray personally. 
I've not done anything, sorry, I have not done everything right, said Ray. I've made numerous mistakes, but you know, life is just a series of experiences that ends up adding to you. I've had my ups and downs, unfortunately, mostly downs, and it's taught me a lot in life. I'm 60 now, and I've fought to get where I am, which is wherever. I don't argue on social media. I don't argue with anybody. I don't fight with anybody. One thing I've learned in life is if you're going to talk about me in a derogatory manner without knowing me or talking to me face-to-face, then anything you're saying means nothing to me. Maybe it should, Marcus. That's what a narcissist would say, to be completely honest. Ray said the accusations against him that he's been promoting violence aren't true. Well, as far as me planning violence, that's ridiculous, he said. Ray said his words at 100 Mile House that were video recorded and put onto social media were said at an emotional time. Earlier this year, Ray gave a speech at 100 Mile House in BC in front of a log cabin, and I've watched that one, I hope you guys have too that hinted there would be aggressive action against leaders in Canada. He made those comments when he was with a group of his ex-military and former police officer friends, and there was a lot of emotion after one of their children had died, which they believe was caused by the experimental formula. We had a very emotional moment, said Ray. I regret every word that came out of my mouth, but I can't take it back. I have to live with it. I have to step aside because they're making a mess out of it. They're the people that are attacking. Ray said, all the freedom movement groups are fighting each other and have faced intense criticism for freedom for, from freedom activists and groups. Uh, Mark Friesen, Saskatchewan PPC candidate, took to social media condemning Ray, telling him not to come to his province on September 11th and that he isn't wanted there. All right, let's leave it at that. And let's bring on our guest tonight. Uh, here he is, the Grizzly Patriot, Mark Friesen. Mark, you got singled out in that article. Uh, <laughs> I saw your rant the other day. And like I was telling you off the air just about 10 minutes ago, I was laughing like a schoolgirl a school almost the entire time I was watching it because every point you made was valid and true, unlike this guy who is lying about being lied about. Right. It's ridiculous. Right. <clears throat> so, um, you know, there's a bit of a history here. Um, Marcus Ray knows a really good friend of mine. A lot of my viewers, followers know him, Sean Taylor, uh, ex-veteran, military. He was a, fired for, from his nursing job. He was an eMERGE nurse in Kelowna. Uh, he's a firefighter and paramedic. And, and uh, so, you know, he's been around the block a little bit. Um, Marcus Ray was a big supporter of Sean. They live in the same riding. Uh, Marcus actually helped Sean in his campaign. And then uh, (laughs) some things happened, and all of a sudden, Marcus Ray decided to take on this leadership role in the movement out of nowhere. Um, Can we explain how that happened? Do you have any details on that? Because it seemed like this guy just came out of the blue. Well, he sort of did. And and so, you know, he's a good talker. He he can talk. And he can attract people with, with his words. He's very emotive. He, he uses a lot of, you know, it's for the children. Um, and, and he draws at those heartstrings. So I, I can understand, you know, some people that maybe aren't as critically minded as I am uh, that would fall for that. And, and, and I mean, there's a lot of people that are frustrated. There's a lot of people that just want some hope. Um, and so when a snake oil salesman such as Marcus or Christopher James roll up, and they're promoting a plan, uh, people are going to be listening. And a lot of cases, people are going to be following because they see that as the answer. But but you really have to bust these things down. So the first plan that Marcus had, that he didn't publicize, but he did speak to Sean Taylor in specifics. And Sean relayed those. And me and Sean talked about that the first time we denounced Marcus Ray's plan. We denounced it because his plan was to include bikers creating some sort of diversion or attraction that the RCMP would converge somewhere. This was unbeknownst to the bikers in the area, right? There there were no bikers that were in this plan with him. This was just his plan. And that then 
once they successfully attracted the RCMP into this area, that Marcus Ray and his thousand band of a thousand rednecks would roll in with whatever and surround the cops. And then they would hold the cops in this position until a judge was commandeered and could then hold our politicians accountable. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah. That, seems, the... that seems to be a common thread that rolls through his yes. schemes, right? They're going to find a judge from somewhere and they're going to get this judge to make everything go away somehow. Right. So, so, you know, I, obviously when, when Sean told me this is like, we, okay, we, we gotta have to go, we have to denounce this. It's, we're going to take some heat for this, but we have to denounce it. This is insane. This is pure insanity. So we denounced it and took a little heat, whatever. And then, he changed his plan, of course. Then he started to move a little bit away from the, the talk about violence. But at the same time, they create a plan where they're going to go to a courthouse in Victoria, commandeer the courthouse, take a judge hostage until what? The politicians come, you know, marching in to be held accountable. And according to Christopher Ray, be hung in the public square. His words, not mine. Christopher well, James. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so there's that plan, and of course, <laughs> we have to denounce it again because yeah. of the insanity of it all, and and then he claims in this piece the other night, last night, that it's lies that we're telling. Well, no, we're not. We're just repeating what you told us, Marcus. We're denouncing what your plan was. You've established the narrative of violence. And we're nowhere near that point in on this path. And, and, and I'll be the first to admit, Shadow, that the path that the government has us on is, is a dark path. And if we can't resolve this politically or legally or through the courts, then, you know, at some point it's going to get dark and it's going to get ugly. But we're, we're far from that. We, we haven't got there yet. And if he thinks we have that critical mass that can affect change, that can use those numbers as leverage to get what we want and what we need, he's sadly mistaken. We're not there yet. No. And we no, have we're to not go even, through this process. Yeah, we're not even close to there yet. As you point no. out, you know, critical mass is absolutely vital to this goal. And I, I don't know how close we are to that critical mass yet i think we're we're improving i think we're getting better i think we've got more and more people waking up uh whether they've come over to our side and uh, are starting to hold flags or not is a different story what's your impression yeah i i just caught one of the comments here from somebody i think it's one of marcus's people uh saying totally taken out of context full of assumptions he never promoted violence at all yes he, well, did. he did he, he, he did yes he did. that's a fact i'm yes, not i'm not making it up i'm no. not um, theorizing about anything. No. I'm just repeating what he said and what his plans have been, Carrie. So you can deny it on his behalf as much as you like, but the fact is this is these were his words. This is what he said. And, and go back to the video where he talked about he even admitted himself he regrets saying what he said at that log cabin in Williams Lake or wherever he was. Um, he regrets that. Because he understands he was promoting violence. And, and so, of course, he regrets it. Because that's who he is. That's what he now represents. Yeah. So you can't, you can't change that. You've established that under your name. And, and, and the government has been waiting for this opportunity to hammer onto the freedom movement. They have so much spite and so much vengeance because of the convoy and what the convoy achieved on the world stage, um, they lost the perception game. The government lost. We won. And the government is very spiteful. I've worked for them for 25 years. I know how they operate. Oh, They're yeah. very spiteful. They're waiting for an opportunity to smash this movement into oblivion. Just like you, they did with January 6th. Mark, do you think that um, Marcus Ray may have been a red flag, a government operative? Uh, and I'm not talking about, hey, let's because he came out of nowhere, like I was saying mm. earlier, and just kind of mm. rose to this uh, infamy in the last six months or so. And 
you know, wherever he went, you know, and saying the things he was saying, it, it seemed like I know he was interviewed by the RCMP one time. Mm. But could that have been a turning moment or was that just kind of like, OK, here's your duty well, now? You know, I, I worked in in law enforcement, in corrections, and we we did that all the time. Right. To get information, we would use convicted criminals um, based on, you know, whatever they've done against them to testify against somebody else right like that's that's common law enforcement that's what they do now marcus ray has throughout his life has put himself in some bad situations he's defrauded a senior citizen for one hundred ninety-five thousand dollars. he owes two hundred and fifty thousand. when the government hears somebody like marcus ray speaking the way marcus ray speaks you know the government is going to come in and offer him a deal or compromise. Now, can do I say can I say this with authority that this is what's happened? No, I can't, um, and I won't. Because, but we have to be cognizant of that. We have to recognize that that could be what's going on here. And Marcus Ray is being used so the government can 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 run this false flag, um, and then make us all look the freedom movement look like a bunch of hillbillies and rednecks and and promoting violence you know it could and, be and, something and, as simple as as the government saying so you owe two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. you haven't right. paid a cent of that back right now here's what we're going to do we're going to take that off your plate we'll pay it for you all right. you have to do is this right or it or it could be from the government or it could be some other entity that's yeah. funding him to yeah. do this for whatever reason and saying listen we'll take care of that debt for you this is what we need you to do right? right so i mean when you're an individual that has that shady of a past and you are that compromised then you have you leave the rest of us no choice but to consider that as a possibility and and that's where credibility is so important in this movement we have to be above reproach we, or we bring down the rest of the movement. And this is yeah. why I'm so adamant. You know, I've been getting crap because I stand up against Marcus Ray's plans and Christopher J's plans. I'm okay with it because I'm righteous, because I'm doing what I can to protect the movement. This has nothing to do with me. This isn't ego. This isn't anything else. This is about protecting a movement that I've been fully invested in for four years, that many people have given up everything in this fight to develop the movement and we're we're actually winning i yeah. spoke to archer Pulowski last night we talked about his kate court case that he won and and i mean we're we're getting these wins and we have to acknowledge them and we have to use those wins as precedent moving forward because they're not finished and so you know shadow in the biggest in the bigger picture you know people always say and i'm sure they say it to you uh, you know, what's your solution? Like, what's you're so critical of Marcus Ray and what he's doing. What do you have? Well, wait a minute before we get into that, because yeah, you know sure. what, you, what you have got. And, and, and I, again, that talk you gave at the Park West Hotel here and, and all across the country, you and Laura Lynn were on tour. I thought that was fantastic. And I really liked what you said uh, in the room that night, which was, uh, you know, I could have given a talk like this four years ago and maybe had six people in the room. And that night, right. Uh, right. the place was filled to capacity. Why yeah. do you think Marcus Ray stepped down? Was it personal pressure or something else? Uh, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not even completely sure he's out of the picture. I, I think this is another perception game that, that Marcus is playing. I think he's still involved, and, and he's stated to others. Others have communicated to me that he's still going to be working in the background. Yeah. He's still going to be part of this. No, he wants so the spotlight, man. He does step... not want to be in the background. He wants, no. he wants a what front is, What does step down mean, man? I, you know, I... <laughs> like, I don't know. And is this whole operation that's supposed to be happening on September 11th going to continue? Well, sasktoday.ca said probably there's five other people within this movement or something that are going to be carrying it on. But nobody knows who they are. They lost their, their face. Right. Uh, yesterday so yeah I, actually I somebody it... somebody sent me a message last night uh i assume from that group i can only assume i can't verify anything because i nobody has names or identities behind this so i have no idea 
but they did suggest that this thing is moving forward uh, without Marcus Ray as the face, that he was just the face and that it'll carry on. So I don't know how they're going to do that when they're faceless and nobody knows who they are. Well, they're going to surround, they're going to surround the RCMP headquarters in Regina. Good luck. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And you know what? It's a full month away or more. And so mm. the RCMP know you're coming. Do you mm. think any trucks or any anybody at all is going to be able to even get close to that area at this point? <laughs> Secondly, no, and, and, and again, what's the end game to this plan? Like they're saying peaceful. OK, so great. Fantastic. So you roll up to depot in Regina, the training facility. And none of those people attending that facility are even cops yet. They're not sworn in. They're nobody. They're training to be one. Um, and you're going to do what? You're going to stand there and what? What's your leverage? What What are you, how are you going to get, number one, all of the RCMP across the country, police forces across the country to join your common law action when th- Every cop across this country is sworn into the system. Yeah, they're not going to drop everything and join you. Um, that's 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 just not going to happen. And so, even if it was to happen, what's the end game? What what's how are you going to force? I keep hearing Christopher James. I watched his video two nights ago, where he claims that. Once they get these politicians into this this courthouse that they've that they've somehow um, yeah commandeered or whatever they've done I don't, I don't know requisitioned is the word yeah. they use I guess yes I don't know yeah. how you requisition a courthouse <laughs> but whatever are these politicians just going to roll up they're just going to march to this to this place where Christopher James has said. He will hang them in the public square. Christopher He'll James did them. say that. He did say that. That is a yes. direct quote. Yeah, he has said that. I, yeah. I watched it on. A, I have it. It's on a video, and and so, but it's not violent, Shadow, right? right. None of this right. is violent. And of right. course, when you come to an RCM, any police station, on mass, saying they have these thousands of people, the biggest convoys ever, uh, when you when you present that to the police a month before what do you think they're going to prepare for it only ends in violence yeah unless it's a red herring mark unless it's a a red herring was we draw all the cops to regina but the real rally is going to be in ottawa or toronto or something but they're not that organized and they can't do that something that people need to keep in mind too aside from all the ridiculousness that we just talked about is the fact that every single social media channel is being monitored by CSIS. anything that the they see as uh, something that's got people watching this show your show what's up canada uh, live from the shed all the independent media it's all being watched on every platform so you yep. cannot communicate any of this stuff on Telegram even or right. WhatsApp or any of the they know. Yes. They know. This has yes. to be a grassroots thing. So that's one of the 100%. other things that doesn't make any and, sense about all and, of this. And all of these people that and this is originally why me and Sean went public to denounce the, the first one. Because at that time they were collecting names of people onto a website. And all the people that are supporting what he's talking about. Marcus Ray was, you mean? What's that? Marcus Ray was, you mean? Yes. Oh, my goodness. And people were were willingly giving their personal information and getting put on a list. Well, who do you think has that list? Right? So we're trying to, we're we're trying to, you know, stop people from, you know. Throwing their lives away? Yeah, throwing their lives away. Exactly. Danny Bulford talked about it. Yeah. You know, numerous times saying, don't throw your life away for some half cocked plan. Like, just just don't do it. You know, what's funny is that Marcus Ray and some other people, I think some of his uh, acolytes have been saying that people like you and I and Danny and uh, Tom Marazzo and, uh, you know, all of the other independent media, we're the compromised ones, not mm. him. Mm. Isn't that interesting? 
Yeah, you know what? But as we spoke about before we came on, Shadow, on balance, um, I would say 98% of all the comments that I've received and the messages that I've gotten have been in support of what I've been standing for and saying. Um, and this is where credibility comes in. I've, I've established my credibility over four years into this movement and many years before that. And, and so my message has always been the same and will continue to remain the same. And, and so, you know, the odd negative ones that I get, um, you know, water off a duck's back, bring your best. I don't care. I know that I'm righteous in what I'm doing. So I, I don't. Whatever. Well, it's it's easy to poke holes in, in Marcus's plan. Yes. Uh, and, and that's what we have done tonight. So I like what you have to say. Building critical mass. Can you give us a, a little bit of that? Yeah, and you know, <laughs> I've been at this for a while. We've done a lot of uh, town halls. I think we've done, you know, I don't know, somewhere around forty-five to fifty town halls, and oh, well over forty thousand kilometers in travel to all of these town halls and locations throughout the west and through northern Ontario, and and through the, all of these town hall events, I say, listen, there is no silver bullet. There is no quick fix to any of this. And I know a lot of people are getting impatient and frustrated and they want an end to all of this insanity. Well, for decades, we have ignored what our politicians have been doing. We've abdicated our responsibility to hold them accountable for what they've done. They've, we thought they had our best interests at heart. They haven't. And so all of that time that they've had to, you know, bring in this agenda and the, and the globalist agenda. And that's what all of this is that we're, that we're fighting against. It's, it, it's not, there's no silver bullet. There's no quick fix. We have to re-engage. We have to come together local. We have to come together in our communities. We have to share the information in our communities. We have to educate the people in our communities so they understand not only what's happening, but why it's happening. And once, and, and, and even as hard as we try, Shadow, Mark Friesen is not going to wake up a lot of the people in my neighborhood. I'm just not. They're not yeah. going to listen to Mark Friesen because they live in a bubble. And they're very protective of that bubble because inside that bubble, they'll, they're still paying the mortgage. They're still putting food on the table. Susie and, 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 and Johnny are still going to hockey. They're still going to school. All these things are still good, even though the insanity outside that bubble is all around. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to burst that bubble necessarily. But reality and the consequences to reality are going to burst those bubbles. And when those bubbles burst, we have to be there. We have to be we have to have planted seeds. So when these bubbles burst, people are like, yes, I remember hearing the Grizz. I remember hearing shadow and i remember hearing laura lynn or other people talking about this and now it's at my front doorstep and and that's when we're gonna have and reach this critical mass everything that we're going through shadow that we've been through we're going through now that we're gonna go through and it's not over yet is all necessary it's all part of the process to reaching critical mass and critical mass is that amount of people that are awakened to what's happening that when we come together, when we unify, we can affect change. We're not there yet. And, and the more we try to force it through plans like Mark, what Marcus Ray has, the more damage we're doing to ourselves and the, yeah. and the movement. Yeah. And that's why I'm so protective of it. So let me ask you this. There's, you got 933 people watching live right now, and there's going to be 10 to 15,000 who see this by this time tomorrow night. Right. What's it going to look like to this average person living in this bubble when it does come to their doorstep? Is it going to be through this inflation? Is it going to yeah. be through more mandates? Or is it going to be a combination of all of this? Stuff? I think it's going to be a combination of, of everything. I mean, you know, just in the last little while, the cost of living is shot through the roof, right? Gas prices, food prices, cost of living is just shot through the roof. And then you add a carbon tax on that and everything else. So people are starting to struggle. They're starting to feel the pain of, of some of the policies that are coming in. You take the farmers that are going to be under attack and the, what's happening in, in the Netherlands with the Dutch farmers. 
and the support that that we put together on the 23rd of July on the for the Dutch farmers and our own farmers because the same policy is going to be applied here. So we, then you see the farmers starting to wait a minute, what's going on here? And the the important thing is through all of these things that are happening, whatever it is, whether it's carbon tax, migrant compact, um, fertilizer, um, COVID, um, trans, whatever, um, any of these issues that are affecting people directly, we have we have to make sure they understand that it's all connected. It's all yeah. part of this globalist agenda, all of it, and and so um, it, it it's it's reality. And as as we move along in this. It's going to be a combination of all these things that they want to achieve. And they're starting to stack up. And, and, and it's going to be horrifying to people that haven't paid attention, that have ignored reality and ignored what's coming. It's going to be horrific. And, and we really, we, I stress this too in our events, that we have to be compassionate. As much shit as we've been put through as freedom fighters and, and fighting this whole COVID nonsense, um, we have to have compassion. We have to understand that, yes, they don't want their bubble burst. And we have to understand that. And when it does, it's going to be horrific for them. And we have to be there and we have to bring them in. And because it's important once that happens, that they don't go running to government, that they don't go running desperate hands out, save me, please, government. We need your warm embrace. That's what they're trying to create. And we have to make sure they, that they go the other way. Exactly. You know, it's it's interesting. Um, uh, have you had a personal experience with somebody who has come to you and said, thank you for waking me up? Yeah. What was that yeah. like? Uh, it, it happens a lot. And and of course, when you're when you're doing these events and town halls, you're connecting with people, you know, and, and they're putting a face to the words. And it's it, when, when it's live and in person, it's a lot more real. And people really take it in a lot better than they do, you know, through through the digital experience, uh, because you feel that what what the emotions like it's it's very real, and so people come up after and they thank me, and I always my response is always the same: it's my pleasure and my duty because I do consider the time that I put into this as duty. Too many people before me gave the ultimate sacrifice so I could have the life that I've had, and. And took for granted. We all have taken our freedoms for granted. None of us have had to fight for anything. And all of a sudden, now we're thrust into this, this period in our lives where now it's our turn. Now we have to. Now it's duty in honor of those before us that have sacrificed everything so we could have the life that we had. And we're about to lose it. And so I consider it duty. Uh, this is this is this is all in duty in honor of those be before us, and so I have no choice. And it is what it is. And and um, you know, you know, it's so funny that people. you say that. All of us feel the same way, mm -hmm. right? Like I don't have a yeah. choice. Somebody asked me why I was right. doing this uh, last week. I think it was at uh, Camp Hope. We had the grand opening of Camp Hope out here in uh, just east of Winnipeg last weekend, and. Mm. And somebody said, why, why are you doing this? I mean, you were a radio guy for 35 years. You just played rock and roll. And I said, well, I don't know. I just, I, I couldn't not do it. I would right. have felt horrible right. if I, if I didn't use whatever mm. influence that I had to tell people that this is, this is crazy. Something you said at the town hall a couple of months back here in town uh, that really opened my eyes. You mentioned the club of Rome, and I want you to touch on that a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. which is the precursor to the World Economic Forum. Um, but every move the Trudeau government has made since they were elected yes. seven years ago has been a World Economic Forum initiative. Amazing. I went through, after that night, I went through and I looked at them all, and yeah, they're all there in, in terms of the sustainable uh, goals. Development, yeah. Yep. Yeah, and it is. And and so it's important when, you know, we're, we're educating and informing that we add some context to things so people can can it's tangible, right? Like it's, yeah. it's relatable. It's, it resonates. And so you add the context, but you also want to add some historical context because it's that historical context that adds legitimacy to what you're saying, that you're not just theorizing. You're not a conspiracy theorist. Um, you're a conspiracy factualist that this actually did occur in the late sixties. The club of Rome was created by the Rockefellers, Rothschilds, uh, Warburgs and Schiffs and a number of others 
to develop the sustainable development agenda based on the book called Limits to Growth. And I encourage everyone to read it. And so that was created in 1971. The World Economic Forum was created by the same people, by the Club of Rome, to support the sustainable development agenda. And, and so it's all related. And, and this is why it's, it's really important for people to understand when I ask someone like Pierre Polivare to denounce the sustainable development agenda, the SDGs, and his response is, I don't know what that is. I haven't read it. Well, <laughs> it's important that people understand what the SDGs represents. The World Economic Forum doesn't exist if those SDGs don't exist. If that the sustainable development agenda doesn't exist, the World Economic Forum doesn't exist. They are, they are attached at the hip. They're there. One is supporting the other. The pinnacle to all of this is the sustainable development agenda. The same agenda that the conservatives signed us on to in 1992. The same agenda that the conservative party under Harper in 2008 made law in this country, which then compels our country to report the progress in achieving sustainable development to an unelected, unaccountable foreign entity called the UN. And then they signed it again in 2015, a month before Trudeau was elected, when he and when he was elected, his first press conference, his first interview with the New York Times, he referred to our country as the first post-national state, based on what Harper just signed a month prior to that. That's what he's referring to. And if you look, as, as you mentioned, if you look at all of the bills that have been signed, all of the OICs, all of the bureaucratic policy that's been put into place since Trudeau was elected in 2015, it's all in compliance with that agenda, all of it, every single thing, which it's is amazing. why we're in such a mess. It's amazing uh, that, you know, you bring up Harper. I was uh, talking about him the other night. Everybody looks back and goes, wow, the good old days when Stephen Harper was in charge, a steady hand at the wheel. The man knew his economics and <laughs> and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, and, and then you play a, a video of him speaking at the World Economic Forum in January of 2012. And as you say, yeah. it goes back even further than that. Yeah. I asked the question to the viewers that night, which was, do you think Stephen Harper knew what he was getting himself into? Or do you think that he was just being used as a puppet? He I think he knew exactly what he was doing. He actually has, has been caught on tape also saying, and I have it, um, where he thinks that Canadians are going to have to accept less sovereignty and, in fact, coined the phrase enlightened sovereignty, um, knowing full well what he was committing to and what his party committed to in 1992 when Mulroney first signed on to it. So all of these MPs, all these cabinet ministers that deny this, that this is happening, that deny that, oh, I haven't read it. Well, hogwash, you voted on it three times. You've been a parliamentarian for 19 years. I'm an arborist, a, pre a previous con uh, corrections officer, and I know all about it. Yeah. And you are a parliamentarian for 19 years and you know nothing? Come on. Of course yeah. they do. It's interesting because Polyev was in Harper's cabinet. When yes. you're in cabinet, plus, you know, Polyev was also, uh, you know, he, he was like the uh, that relationship they had mentor deal. Uh, he was privy to everything that Harper knew. And yes. so was Jason Kenney. Yes. And so was... Uh, probably Brian Pallister, former yeah. premier of Manitoba, all of those guys who were in that cabinet, they knew what was going on and they just went along with it. Now, what about the cabinet? We hear from Klaus Schwab that half of the liberal cabinet has been compromised by the World Economic Forum. Are they all, are they all in on it, Mark? Or are they just being used as useful idiots? I think the upper echelon of the party are more than aware, like the Pierre Polivares, of course he knows, um, the cabinet, the shadow cabinet. Um, <clears throat> but there's a lot of MPs that are coasting. There's a lot of MPs that just are there to get their, their wages, their benefits, and their pension, and could care less about what's happening in the bigger world. Shadow, since 1992, since Mulroney first committed to this agenda, there hasn't been one, not one, MP, regardless of party, not one MLA, not one premier, nobody elected, not a city council person, not a mayor, no elected official has ever held a town hall explaining to the people what they've committed us to. It's never happened. 
Absolutely. unelected. And I'm that's throw their something- job. I'm going to throw something up on the screen here for you. And uh, this is something I was only just made aware of a couple of days ago. And I find it fascinating. Uh, It's the WBCSD, which is the World Business Council for Sustainable Development. Hmm. And Mark, when you look at the members, the corporate members of this group, it is absolutely astounding and nearly never ending. You got to go right down to the bottom and you see 3M, you Hmm. see Accenture. You see Abbott Industries and uh, Apple, Google, uh, all of these. Is this part of the World Economic Forum or is this something yes. different? Are you aware of these guys? Yes. yes. So <clears throat> here's how it breaks down. And it's an easy way to understand what's what's happened and what the role is of each of these groups. So the UN is really, you know, I have to go back even a little bit further. This was a convergence after World War II. Oh, we saw two ideologies, fascism and communism, fighting each other, responsible for the deaths of millions of people. And after World War II, they decided that they should that they need to converge. Rather than fighting each other and destroying each other, they need to converge. And that's what exactly what's happened. That's what the UN brought together. The UN is really the, the communist arm, if you look at who runs most of the committees at the UN, it's people that come out of Socialist International. Antonio Guterres, the, the general of the UN, uh, comes straight out of Socialist International. Uh, that's sort of the communist arm. That's where we're all in this together. You know, all of these, the, the World Health Organization. Build back better, blah, blah, blah. All of this, all of this nonsense. But yeah. then you have the World Economic Forum, which is really the fascist side. This is the, the private-public partnerships that we always hear about. This is this is global government and global governance and their partnership with multinationals, oligarchs, monopolies, big tech, all of these super companies the that all have had record revolution. profits through COVID, yes. right? Yeah. While, yeah. while mom and pop small business is destroyed, um, yeah. they all benefit. And that's what this all is. This is all about control. It's all about hoarding resources and then distributing that wealth to these corporations, to these NGOs, um, you know, and, and they, oh, in the cover of, we're just redistributing wealth from the West so we can feed the poor in, in Africa, right? I mean, it's it's all hogwash, but this is the premise that they use. And when you look at and you read the, the goals of sustainable development, if you transpose those goals onto the Communist Manifesto, it's exactly the same thing except on steroids. And, and <laughs> right? I mean, it, it's it's amazing if you if you understand it, but it's written very pretty. There's a lot of pretty language in this agenda that, hey, we're going to solve, we're going to end world hunger. (laughs) You're going to end world hunger while you restrict the use of nitrogen fertilizer that's actually been able to, uh, you know, avoid famine and and starvation because of how it benefits the the planet and the the ability to grow food. Is this Uh, part of the depopulation agenda? Yes. And that's and that's another thing that people need to understand, that the if you watch, guy by the name of Dennis Meadows, he um, he's Love one of the Rome founders guy. of the Club of Rome. Yeah. He wrote. He's a co-author of Limits to Growth. Yeah. One of their primary objectives through the this whole agenda is depopulation, population reduction. He's very open in an interview. It's pinned to my Twitter. If anyone wants to look at it. He's very open. He's convinced that we need to reduce the Earth's population from 7 billion to 1 billion. And he wants to do it. He said, well, maybe 2 billion, maybe. Maybe 2. Well, but then the other option, of course, is we could probably have 8 or 9 billion, but we need to be under a dictatorship to do that, right? So this is where where we're moving to, and this is what they're conditioning the masses to get adjusted to this dictatorship is from a global perspective. And so, you know, here it is. And it's all written down. It's all there for everybody to see. None of what I talk about is theory. I don't have time to theorize. I just repeat what they're telling us. Yeah, it's all there. And that's that's the thing. So when you lay it out like that, which I think is uh, brilliantly laid out, you lay down the groundwork. Where did this all come from? People now want to know. Uh, when you lay it down like that and you start talking about it from there, 
moving it up to see what's been going on recently, then it becomes crystal clear that, yes, there is an agenda. This yes. is just not just some weird confluence of a bunch of uh, freaky uh, right. Marxists trying to put their agenda across. This is all part of a master plan that was concocted 80 or so years ago. Well, that's it's interesting because uh, the UN, well, first of all, UNESCO came out with a list of conspiracy theorists in Canada. And of course, I'm on there with Laura Lynn and Maxine Bernier and a few others, Chris Guy. Um, <laughs> Badge but it's water, interesting bro. how they're setting the stage for this. UN just made an announcement a couple of days ago that there's a war on conspiracy theorists. And no, the, the, the planet isn't run by an unelected, unaccountable foreign entity. While an unaccountable, unelected foreign entity is telling us that, right? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, it's it's so stupid. It's it's. I mean, they it's and they give themselves away too. You know, like yeah, you see yeah. Jacinda Ardern a few months ago, the yeah. prime minister over in New Zealand. There, who is a young global leader, she yeah. comes out and tells the press, or you know, to the people through the press, that mm -hmm. you are only to listen to us. We are the only people yes. who are giving you the truth. Everything else, you take with a grain of salt. We are the only ones with the truth. The Ministry of Truth, straight out yes. of 1984. That's exactly yes. how that came across. And I'm surprised that Trudeau hasn't slipped up because he's not the brightest guy. I'm surprised he hasn't slipped up and come out and said something like that himself. Right, right. You know? Well, I mean, the Trudeau's, Trudeau's done his part. I mean, I think it was in the fall of 2021 where he said openly to the world that they're using COVID-19 to achieve the goals of sustainable development. He did so, that, so, I mean, at that moment, he became the most powerful conspiracy theorist in the country. Right. Right. So, yeah. again, what can we do? We can convince people, we can build our own communities, and we can stand our ground and just say no when all of the lockdowns and restrictions come back, right? Yeah, and that's it. I mean, so, you know, I, I've put together, it's been a mission of mine for a number of years now, um, to do these town hall events. And we did it right through the height of the pandemic when we were in lockdown and we weren't allowed to gather. We did it anyway. And we did it through rural folks, through through farmers and ranchers. And because it's the farm, it's the rural folk that still have, you know, these values of self-reliance, self-determination, independence, and that community can solve the problems. They don't need government to solve problems. We'll figure it out. We're smart enough. We're human. This is what we've always done and we'll continue to do it. And so that's the attitude of, of rural folks. So that's where we focused our energy because they're the folks that are starving for the truth, are, are hungry for the truth. It's not going to be the urbanites that save this country. I can tell you that much. It's going to be the rural folks that come I agree. together. I agree. And, and, the, and the byproduct of all of these meetings is not only the sharing of information and education and 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 connecting the dots and adding context it's this development again of the communities of bringing people together sharing ideas in the event that things really do go south hard um we're going to be able to figure it out we're going to be able to come together and develop these communities and survive um a lot better than these people that are in the cities that have no idea, don't know they're here from their elbow. Well, the people in the cities are going to be, they're going to be living in one of those new smart cities like they're talking yes. about in Saudi in Arabia. Pod. Yeah. Like that. Right. And that's it. Mark, thank yeah. you so much for coming on tonight, man. I really appreciate it. I, I want to have you back as soon as possible. Are you guys going to be going out and doing another town hall tour at any point? Yeah, or? we're, we're actually just released uh, the locations. We're starting September 7th. We're starting in Edmonton. And it's a 20-night tour through Alberta and BC, and then we're going to head up to the Yukon, and then circle around, finish up in northern Alberta. Uh, so that'll be a, that. We're looking forward to that. And then in October, we're talking about um, what they refer to as the Golden Horseshoe in southern Ontario. I'm, I'm not exactly sure what that is. Yeah, it's but Toronto, it's gonna, Hamilton, uh, all yeah, the areas around there. Yeah, right. And yeah. hopefully make it up to Kingston um, and do a tour there. So yeah, we're we're staying busy. Uh, hopefully nobody locks us down uh, before we can get all this done. Because you'll do it anyway. And this is you and Laura yeah. Lynn, yeah. Me and myself, Laura Lynn, Salim Mansour, and Sean Taylor. Cool. All right, man. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, where can we find you on social media? By the way, those of uh, the viewers want to follow you. They love to hear what you yeah. have to say. So I have a number of them on Facebook, Mark Friesen, of course, and then Mark Friesen PPC, and then I have 
my ulterior accounts, Mark Friesen, Saskatoon Grasswood, and then Canada First uh, on Facebook, and then the Forum for Canadian Sovereignty, both a group and a page. That's all Facebook. And then I have a YouTube channel, uh, Mark Friesen, Grizzly Patriot. And then Rumble Odyssey is the Grizzly Patriot. Um, Twitter, Mark Friesen 08. And then a website, FFCS Forum for Canadian Sovereignty, FFCS.info. All right, Matt. Thanks for coming on tonight. We'll talk to you again real soon. <laughs> there is Mark. Uh, sorry, Matt. I, I didn't mean to bring you out like that. Thank you, Mark. We'll talk to you again soon. How yeah, about it's, that? It's all good, man. Okay, Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the Grizzly Patriot. Okay, so look, let's go through this uh, thing here because it's important now that you guys have been a little bit more illuminated than you were an hour ago. The World Business Council for Sustainable Development. Let's go to the page here and, and see what this is. The World Business Council for Sustainable Development. Here it is right here. Here's all of their initiatives. You guys can go and check this out yourself. Vision for 2050, imperatives, pathways, redefining value, projects, overview. Uh, it's all here. Global network, uh, CEO guides, uh, the approach, the members. Th look at the th 3M, Amazon, Aptar, uh, Arcadis. Baker McKenzie, the BMW group, Bloomberg is on this. Bayer, uh, the drug maker, the aspirin maker is on this. Then you've got BP. These are not small operations. You've got Cargill on this. Chevron, uh, Covestro, Cortiva, DBS, Deloitte. All of this, guys. And this is in conjunction with the World Economic Forum. So now, does everything Mark was saying make more sense these organizations we cannot give them any air there's two ways we're going to be able to make this happen bring them down and that is politically and financially so the time is coming very soon for us to stop shopping at superstore to stop eating at these fast food places, any kind of corporate entity whatsoever. Don't order anything from Amazon. You, you got to stop it because every time you do that, think of all the other millions of people. And I know, guys, I know that right now you think we're too small to have an effect on them, but we're growing. We're not that small. If you think about this show and all the other shows out there, Laura Lynn and Mark and, and What's Up Canada with Wayne, and uh, live from the shed and all of the shows, all of the independent media, just in this country. If you think about all of the followers we have all combined, it's millions and millions and millions of people. And we're all going to start sending the same message. Of course, we're not going to do it in lockstep. It just so happens that we're all critical thinkers. And we agree that the best way to choke off the World Economic Forum and their offshoots is to stop giving them oxygen. And to them, Money is oxygen. And we have to start our own groups, our own communities, our own barter and trade systems. And look at what's going on in the Northwest Territories right now. Now, if you're an agriculture uh, person up there, if you're a farmer, if you grow things in a greenhouse, you have to get a government permit before you can sell any of your stuff to anybody. And who do you think they're going to give those permits to? The people that agree with the agenda. It's pretty simple. So <clears throat> this is something interesting. And again, guys, this is political. This comes from the counter signal. Key and Bexty's thing. You know the Trudeau, uh, you know, he wants to get rid of the, the fertilizer, reduce that by 30%. The farmers are not happy about it, nor should they be. But the premiers of all of the big farming, prov or, uh, farming provinces in the country uh, Jason Kenny, yeah, he's still the premier of Alberta. Scott Moe there in Saskatchewan. And uh, Thelma from Scooby-Doo from Manitoba. Uh, they have all come out and denounced the federal government's plan. Uh, first, uh, Heather, Steff he Heather Stephenson has written this letter to Justin Trudeau. Your, government, uh, your government's national emissions reduction targets are being brought forward at the worst possible time. They will negatively impact producer yields, which will mean higher grocery bills and less food security. Notice that term is coming out a lot more lately. Food security, less food security for families. This cannot be another blow to the affordability 
of raising a family in Manitoba. Other negative consequences, and this is something I thought of uh, last weekend and the weekend before when Carrie and I were on our uh, rural Manitoba, rural Saskatchewan trip. Look at all these fertilizer plants. Look at all this grain. Like how much money are these folks going to lose? Are they going to lose their homes? Are they going to lose a percentage of their land? What about the people in the processing plants? They're going to lose their jobs too? That was something I thought of and Heather Stephenson put down on, on an email, I guess, and sent to Justin Trudeau. Other negative consequences will involve job losses in the agricultural and food processing uh, sectors and hurt the livelihoods of farmers across Canada, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Scott Moe, not happy at all. And neither is Jason Kenny. So the bottom line here, guys, is do you think they mean what they say here? Maybe to some extent they do, but they understand that they are premiers of agricultural uh, provinces. Agriculture is the number one industry in Manitoba and Saskatchewan. It's number two in Alberta behind oil and gas. So, yeah, uh, you know, the rural support in these provinces means everything to the parties in power right now. Of course, they're going to say these things. But they're all, all still part of the problem. You see, this is the thing, too. When we sit here and we say, oh, that was a good move by them. I agree with that. You can go ahead and agree with it. That's fine. But you also need to understand, we also need to understand the real motivations behind it. These politicians are only making political decisions. They're not making decisions based upon your well-being. It's that simple. It's just that simple. Uh, let's continue on with some of the other stuff that I've got for you guys tonight. Joe Biden, the Biden regime has declared a monkeypox public health emergency, just as we predicted. The Blue Jays made a trade. This is interesting. Remember who the Toronto Blue Jays are owned by? Rogers. Remember that big Rogers outage about a month ago? Yeah. The Blue Jays are leaving the vaccination decision up to Merrifield after trade. This is a big star the Blue Jays just traded for um, from Kansas City, I believe. After trading for Whit Merrifield, the two-time All-Star, the pressing question for the Blue Jays was not the caliber of player, but what his availability would look like due to the vaccination status. There's nothing new to note on that front, interim manager John Schneider said on Wednesday, and the team insists it'll be leaving it up to Merrifield to decide how he approaches his vaccine choice from here. If he says, I'm not getting vaccinated, that means that when he gets to Toronto, he's going to have to quarantine for two weeks, according to the national rules. And then anytime the Blue Jays take a road trip, which is always to the United States, because there are no other Canadian teams in Major League Baseball, he won't be able to go. Because when he comes back, he'll just have to quarantine for two more weeks. So what was the point in trading for this guy in the first place? Merrifield said, you know what? I may decide at some point in the future, I do want to get this experimental formula. Maybe if a team I'm on happens to make the playoffs, but I'm not making that decision. My decision to not get it was well thought out. That's what he says in this story here. So the Rogers owned Toronto Blue Jays can go ahead and arbitrarily decide one of their employees can be unvaccinated when everybody else who worked for them had to get a jab or wouldn't be allowed to come into work? <sighs> That's absolutely outrageous. Uh, I'm going to play that. No, not going to play that. That is uh, 10 minutes long. It's a great piece. I'll tell you who it is. Uh, this is the, the kid that I like, front page news on YouTube, talking about Health Canada never recommended the travel vaccine mandate, but that's a story we covered last night. This is about a 10-minute video in case you guys want to give that a spin. But lastly, I wanted to play this for you. It's not it is eight minute and 22 second video. I'm not going to play the whole thing for you. I'll play the first couple of minutes. This is Sting at a concert he was performing in Poland. Listen to what he has to say to the crowd between songs here. So, here's what I want to say. Democracy is under attack. Democracia została zaatakowana. It's under attack in every country in the world. Zaatakowana w każdym kraju na świecie. There's a grave danger of being lost unless we defend it. Jeśli nie będziemy jej bronić, stracimy ją na zawsze. Democracy is messy. 
Ale demokracja to bałagan. Democracy is frustrating. Demokracja to frustracja. Democracy is often inefficient. Demokracja bywa nieskuteczna. It needs constant attention. Wymaga ciągłej uwagi. Constant adjustment. Ciągłej naprawy. But it is still worth fighting for. Ale wciąż warto o nią walczyć. Because the alternative to democracy is a nightmare. Bo alternatywa dla demokracji to koszmar. The alternative to democracy is a prison. Alternatywa dla prawdziwej demokracji to więzienie. A prison of the mind. Więzienie umysłu. The alternative to democracy is violence, oppression, imprisonment, and silence. Alternatywa dla demokracji to przemoc, opresję, zniewolenie i milczenie. That alternative is called tyranny. Ta alternatywa nazywa się tyranią. All tyranny is based on a lie. A każda tyrania oparta jest na kłamstwie. The greater the tyranny, the bigger the lie. Im większa tyrania, tym większe kłamstwo. Okay, he goes on and on. If you want to check that whole thing out, I'm, I'm not sure he goes on an eight minute and 22 te- a second spiel about democracy here. I think there's probably a song in there somewhere. <laughs> But here's the YouTube channel you can find it on. Agneska. Agneska. That's A-G-N-N-E-Z-K-A. Yes, we say Z in Canada for our American viewers. A-G-N-N-E-Z-A-K. I'm sure you can find it elsewhere, but this is where I found it. Now, does this mean that Sting is on our side? Is it possible? When we all get thrown in the gulag sometime in November or December, or maybe next spring, that Sting could be in the cell beside you? Wouldn't that be exciting? Roxanne! Like that SNL sketch from years ago when they were funny, remember? You don't have to put on the red light. All right, guys, that's it for the show tonight. Hey, listen, if you miss me on the Lieutenant Steve Rogers show, it is on the page. I think it's right. Be- it's the post right below this one, the one you're watching right now. I had a fantastic with the, uh, conversation with the lieutenant tonight. We talked about a lot of things, including Bill C-11, which could get passed into law when the Senate comes back to sit in the third week of September. We also talked a little bit more about Marcus Ray stepping down as well. Uh, we don't know if that plan is going to carry on, but right now it doesn't matter, guys. We don't need that kind of action in the country right now. We'll all know it when the time comes. And it's funny, you know, what, what Mark said tonight, Mark Fries and the Grizzly Patriot, we will all know when that time comes. We'll just know. And right now is not the time. The Shadow at Night live stream is brought to you by Tacit Investigations and Security. The mission is to be the pinnacle solution service provider of investigation and specialized security services to clients through innovation, intelligence, and integration headquartered in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Tacit's a full service and licensed and bonded investigation and security agency service areas all across Canada and abroad. The executive team at Tacit is diverse and specialized. They have over 75 years of combined military and law enforcement industry experience, and they denounce Marcus Ray and his movement. They handle due diligence investigations, infidelity infidelity investigations, criminal investigations. They also handle many different special security operations. Find them online, tacit-investigations.com or call 204 952 4775, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Tacit investigations in security. And the show is also brought to you by Canada Nanosilver.ca. Now, Kev told me today that uh, he and Anna will not be at the open market at Grand Marais tomorrow between two and six, but they will be at Victoria Beach between 10 and one 
on Saturday with their products in case you want to go and buy them in person if you happen to be in that area. Tooth Gel, uh, Kev says, consistently, and Neil, uh, one of the biggest sellers of all of the products they have there. Of course, all of the products are made with the power of Silver Sol technology. The Tooth Gel is interesting. I've used it uh, many, many times, not every night, but it actually helps that morning breath that you may wake up with. So you can kiss your husband, you can kiss your wife without fear of going, or them going, oh my God, did an elephant crap in your mouth? <laughs> and it also helps to support oral hygiene. Triple action formula with silver cell technology, xylitol therapeutic grade peppermint oil, probiotic friendly, independent clinical trial showed significant results in as little as one week, uh, up to 12 hours of protection, Independent studies have shown silver salt technology to be up to 10 times more effective than products containing uh, up to 3,000 parts per million of silver. Naturally promotes, uh, sorry, promotes clean, healthy teeth and gums with natural organic ingredients. Non-abrasive, no BPAs, no triclosan, glycerin, fluoride, parabens, or sodium, or laurel sulfates. I don't know what any of that stuff is, but I think it's bad. Check it out for yourself. They also have the toothpaste, CanadaNanoSilver.ca. CanadaNanoSilver.ca. And that's it for the show tonight, you guys. A couple of quick notes before I let you go here. Uh, Ron Clark, Freedom Advocate. You may follow him here on Facebook. Uh, he is right now camping out at the center of Canada. He's going to join the show tomorrow night. And hopefully we got our fingers crossed for Freedom jo George. Freedom George to be on the show tomorrow night as well. Uh, Saturday, it's going to be an Ottawa convoy truckers reunion at the center of canada they're having a big pig roast so if you were one of the truckers or if you supported the convoy you are welcome to go down there and say hello it's on the center of canada uh they're all parked there they got their rvs and trucks all lined up there i think karen and i are going to be going out to say hello we would love to see you there the center of canada for the big uh convoy reunion pig roast this coming saturday and that's it for the show tonight uh I'll catch you tomorrow night, 8 o'clock Central, for another Shadow at Night live stream. Until then, I love you all. Bye for now.